Hey guys, it's me again and the topic for today is the top 5 mistakes the people make when they are starting or maybe already using a Zabbix as their monitoring solution. This is top 5 just in my opinion. Uh, don't think about the order of the things I will be telling. It's just 5 things. It's not like top 1, top 2, top 3. Um, there won't be any, any screencast. This will be just me talking about those 5 things that people do wrong. First of all, database configuration. For some reason, when people install the Zabbix server in their environment, maybe from the sources, Docker containers or, uh, or packages, it doesn't matter. They first of all make a choice which database engine they're going to use. And we can touch also this one a little bit. Uh, you know already the supported databases inside of Zabbix. There's nothing new. Uh, which one to choose? Which one is better? And our opinion is you need to choose the one which is more familiar to you because you'll have to work with it, you'll have to tune it, you'll have to do any troubleshooting if something will be wrong with the database or its performance. And then when you configure your database, mandatory, do the tuning in the configuration file. If it is a MySQL, it will be my.cnf or uh, depending if it's uh, some different version or MariaDB, there might be different files, file names, but you must do the tuning. How much? The more, the better. There are quite a lot of uh, guides and documentations available online in the internet how to tune your database. I would not say that you need specifically search for like how to tune a database for the Zabbix. Just tune your database for a production instance for a lot of uh, inserts, reads, operations. Utilize the memory from your computer. Utilize the CPU because pretty often people just uh, install MySQL default configuration file. They start the issue, uh, the performance issues. They add a memory, still bad. Add additional memory, still bad. In the end, they have around 500 gigs of memory on a database server and the performance is still struggling. Why? Because the database configuration file is not optimized. And yes, you may have 500 gigs on the server, but database is not utilizing any of those simply because the configuration file is a default. Second point, Zabbix server configuration file. Again, you perform a clean installation and you might think like, yeah, I do have a powerful server for my, for my Zabbix server. It has, uh, let's say as example, again, 500 gigs, uh, 32 cores or something like that. I'm not a, an expert in the Zabbix, but I am absolutely sure about my physical server or virtual machine. And uh, what users sometimes do, they open the configuration file of the Zabbix and you know that there are quite a lot of parameters and uh, you can increase the amount of the most uh, internal processes, collector processes, history sinkers, uh, alerters, timers, pollers, trappers, and other stuff. And for some reason, people think my server is powerful, I will increase everything to the maximal value. 1000 trappers, 1000 pollers, 100 history sinkers, and in the result, you'll have around 200 Mbps and your performance will be quite bad. Remember, uh, specifying maximal amount of the processes, maximal cache size simply because you have a memory is not a way to go. It is a mistake. Those parameters should be specified based on the performance graphs that you have inside the front end. If you don't know what I'm talking about, just open your front end, go to the monitoring, graphs, choose the host Zabbix server and check three graphs. Zabbix internal process busy, Zabbix data gathering busy and Zabbix cache usage. If you see that the pollers are constantly 70-80% busy, yes, increase the pollers. If they are around, let's say 10%, there is no need to increase them. If somebody before you already changed the config file and you see that the poller is, uh, I don't know, 1% busy and you have uh, 300 pollers started, try to reduce them to 150. Maybe it will be still good. And remember, having more processes does not mean that performance will be better. Third thing, templates. Um, this was a big issue also for me when I just started to explore this Abix world. Um, everywhere you will read that templates is a best practice. Templates is a way to go. But when you're just starting, 
uh, exploring stuff in the front end, you might think like, why do I need the templates? I can create the same items, triggers directly on the host. And for me, it seems kind of easier. But remember, the larger will be your environment, the more hosts you'll have, host groups, the more complicated it will be to ma maintain and manage all that stuff without the templates. If you have a template, link it to 1000 hosts, you need to change, let's say, a trigger threshold, do a one change in the template, and it will affect all the 1000 hosts. If you don't have them, well, unfortunately, you will have to do that separately for each host where you need to change that threshold. Number four, overthinking. Uh, this is specifically from my opinion. Sometimes, sometimes people really overthink. Um, I'm not talking about like uh, configuration parameters or, or something else. They overthink in the design and architecture of their Zabbix installation. Guys, if you have a small installation, 500 or 50 NVPS, and uh, let's say it's not a tier one critical system and it's not monitoring tier one critical softwares and services, there is no need to overthink your setup. Uh, be careful with all the load balancers. Don't use load balancers on the Zabbix server traffic. It is okay to use multiple frontends. Zabbix server must be only one. Zabbix server works in a high availability setup, but only as active passive. Um, what else? Yes, so sometimes it is easier to have one Zabbix server, one frontend, one database. Yes, there might be on separate hosts, but not any Zabbix installation requires some load balancing with a max scale and active active proxy setup uh, over uh, VPNs and multiple frontends again with the load balancing with Nginx and custom configuration. Sometimes it is better, uh, in most cases not. It will be just more complicated to manage and if you will be utilizing all of those load balancing stuff on the Zabbix server, most likely the performance will be just worse. And the last thing for today is triggers. Uh, probably one of the mo most important things and uh, entities in any monitoring uh, environment and, and, and software, like you're collecting the data and of course you're all creating a triggers that will or should notify you when the problem will happen. Unfortunately, without a big experience, uh, people tend to create some absolutely basic triggers last value higher than 5, last value lower than 10, and stuff like that. In the end, when your environment grows, think about the sensitivity of those triggers. Last value higher than something. And uh, in the end, you might end up with receiving hundreds or even thousands emails from your monitoring system about the problems uh, on which you don't actually care. You will receive like, oh, yeah, CPU load uh, higher than 85%. Oh, it's a common thing. I receive 50 of those alarms each day and I won't even pay attention to that. But instead of using that dot last, you could use more complex triggers. Use some average uh, um, function on the amount of the last checks or simply average of last two hours or detect anomalies and compare the average for last two hours with the same average of two hours yesterday. And if that will be twice higher, only then actually fire the trigger and execute an action. Calculate the percentiles, uh, evaluate the strings from the log monitoring items, include multiple items and multiple hosts in one trigger expression. Like uh, let's say the CPU utilization on the web engine is higher than something in the last two hours, which is average. And at the same time, we are monitoring the amount number of users online on our web page and let's say CPU load is higher and amount of the users is higher than 200, then it's not a problem because, well, 200 users online and uh, that's what our web engine is capable of, then it's not a problem. Or just create those more complex, think about your triggers. Utilize the data you have, utilize the host's items, include multiple of those in the expressions, 
be aware of the false positives. Nobody wants to receive thousands of alerts each day, week or month. Because in the end, when the actual problem will happen, you might simply ignore it. Because, well, I daily receive 550 notifications about it. Um, pretty quick video. Those were top five things, in my opinion, that people tend to do wrong. If, again, you need some, uh, let's say, deeper uh, explanation and, and you would want to know some more information about any of these topics, let me know in the comments and uh, we'll see you in the next videos. Thank you and goodbye.